welcome everyone. We're glad everybody could join us. I know we're all excited, so that's why we have plenty of staff, and I tried to extend the invitation to everybody because I think we're all excited for, for Bishop Flonitz, uh, who will be one of two representing the United States and all the bishops in the U.S. in Mexico City. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Bishop Flonitz. Well, thank you. I just want to make a few remarks and then maybe questions. First of all, uh, to express my gratitude to Almighty God for this opportunity, uh, really came as quite a surprise to be asked uh, by the President of the Bishops' Conference of the United States to, uh, to be one of two bishops to represent uh, the bishops of the Church of the United States uh, in Mexico at the time of the, of the Pope's Pope Francis' visit. Uh, and also gratitude to the Bishops' Conference of Mexico for extending that invitation uh, to, the, uh, to the bishops of the United States to send representatives. I, uh, Quite sure that they have also invited other representatives, especially from the Americas, to uh, other bishops' conferences to send, uh, to send representatives. Really, it's a it's a it's a way for the whole church uh, in the Americas by sending representatives to express a sense of, of uh, solidarity and communion, and really sharing the joy of the moment, the joy of the grace uh, that will be expressed there. That's uh, that's really already being expressed in anticipation as the people uh, of Mexico prepare for this very uh, significant visit on the part of Pope Francis. Quisiera agradecer a la Conferencia Episcopal de los Estados Unidos uh, por la invitación uh, de ser un representante del país, de la iglesia en este país, a uh, la visita pastoral del Santo Padre a México. Y también la Conferencia Episcopal de México por haber extendido la invitación a la Conferencia Episcopal de los Estados Unidos. Y uh, imagino también otras conferencias episcopales aquí en los, uh, en los continentes de las, de las Américas. Y va uh, a ser un honor y, uh, y una gracia poder compartir la alegría del pueblo de México uh, en este momento de, de gracia. Um, people have asked me, and maybe I just anticipate the question, people, what, what, what's the first thing you're going to do? I always tell people, lo primero es saludar a la Virgen. Oh, first thing is I'm going to yes. say, I'm going to greet the Blessed Virgin. It's been a long time since I've been to Our Lady of Guadalupe, uh, and the, the first major, major event with the Holy Father will be at the Basilica in Mexico City. And then, and then on behalf, uh, if I get a chance, uh, to get uh, to greet the Pope personally, to um, be able to greet him on behalf of the United States and certainly on behalf of the Rio Grande. So I'm, uh, I'm also praying that the Lord will kind of give me a spirit of openness to kind of allow the events to unfold in a way that God wants them to unfold. You don't go with a big agenda. You just let things kind of happen. And sometimes when things happen uh, that way, you let things kind of unfold, then, then God can give you many surprises. And see, for muchas sorpresas durante esta visita a México. Lo que anticipo más es compartir la fe del pueblo en este momento de alegría. So I'm looking forward to sharing the, the faith of the church as it expresses itself in this moment of grace and joy. So, um, another thing people have asked me is, is what do I think the Holy Father will say? Well, it's very difficult to predict what the Holy Father will say, and so I will not try. However, I do know this. I think the Holy Father very deeply wants to, wants to come as a pilgrim. He's expressed a great desire to visit the Basilica of Lady Guadalupe and to visit the many places of Mexico that he will be going, and really to express uh, his, his being uh, an encouragement and a source of hope and encouraging the people of Mexico and indeed of all of the Americas, all up and down the, the continents, to, uh, to, to do our very best to, uh, to live our hopes and our aspirations and to be particularly mindful of those who are poor, uh, those who suffer, uh, those who are experiencing grave difficulties in their families or in their economic situation, and, and as always, as everywhere he goes, I think the Holy Father is to be very concerned about the plight of migrants as they travel across the, across the Americas and their situations and their family situations. He's asking us all to be a people of mercy, and that means that we have to be a people who are, who are attentive to the needs and the faces of the people around us. And one thing that the Holy Father very much does is he always spends time talking to people and listening to them and touching in a certain way, their pain, but also their joy. And that's a great source of hope uh, for the church, really for the world. And so, uh, so I'm looking forward to, to sharing those moments uh, with, with everyone who's able to, uh, to participate. I know many people will participate by television and radio and, and internet and so forth, so, so, uh, so I, I think it will have wide-ranging effects uh, far beyond Mexico. Um, El Santo Padre viene como un peregrino, <laughs> desea compartir 
la fe del pueblo y desea animar a los que están sufriendo. Es la cosa que siempre el Santo Padre desea hacer en sus visitas pastorales. Es llamar la atención de todo el mundo a las personas vivas, a las familias que están sufriendo por, por varias razones y tratar de dar ánimo y dar esperanzas y también llamar a todo el mundo a reconocer que todos somos responsables para el bien de nuestros hermanos y hermanas. Sean ricos, sean pobres, sean migrantes, sean personas que están viviendo en sus propias casas y hogares. Entonces tenemos que escuchar bien lo que dice el Santo Padre y tratar de, de, de pedir la gracia de poder pues, también vivir la fe, que es vivir la misericordia. ¿no? So, anyway, I mean, you may have other questions, but I, I do want to just kind of open up with that, and I am very, very grateful, and, uh, and uh, I'm grateful for the prayers and support I've gotten, certainly from the diocesan staff and from the many, many parishes everywhere I go, uh, who people who really feel have been very uh, supported by their prayers and by their encouragement. So I will take the valley with me wherever I go, and I will take it with me when I go into Mexico. So there it is. You mentioned the migrants from the Middle East, why do you think it's important that the Pope highlight the fight of the migrants here. And, and, and you, coming from the valley where right now it's been happening for a couple of years, decades, uh, more recently. Yeah. Well, the Holy Father is aware uh, that, that we are living in a time of great migration, not just in the Americas, but in, but in things that are affecting uh, the Middle East and affecting uh, Europe. And, and since the very beginning of his papacy, he has attempted to call attention to what, what he calls people, people the voiceless, those who who lose their lives and, and there's a kind of an indifference, especially in the, in, in the more advanced parts of the world, an indifference to, to, to people who really, who really are suffering incalculable loss of family and of life. And I think he will bring that message, uh, as he has consistently to us in the Americas, always to be a, a people who are much more uh, intent upon not being indifferent to what people suffer. Uh, I think we can expect the Holy Father to, to surprise us in how he will get that message across. It will not just be in what he says, it will also be in where he goes, who he talks to, and where he puts his time, and where he puts his blessing. And, and, and more than anything, his desire to show that, that we have to look at the faces and listen to the lives of people who, who, are, who are experiencing the need to, to migrate, um, and, and, and in some way to, to recognize that they are brothers and sisters who, who have full and complete human dignity, and that should be respected and should be should be uh, especially defended under law. Uh, yeah. Follow up to that. What do you think the impact is of the church being so heavily uh, focused on the struggle of migrants? Uh, and, and again, kind of my understanding is he, he has attempted to come here before to the valley, but because of maybe security issues, maybe not able to. And, and this is part of the reason he's going to be in Mexico. Can you elaborate on that? Yes. Yes, the, well, the Holy Father expressed a desire to, to, to visit a lot of places when he came to the United States. And the circumstances were such that, that, that he visited uh, uh, Washington and, and Philadelphia and New York. But at the same time, even while he was here, he expressed his desire to go to Mexico and, and, and to in some way touch, touch the border experience. And I think the visit to Juarez will be particularly important that way uh, as a kind of a sign. Uh, really a sign that he, he is not indifferent and that we shouldn't be either. Uh, to the experience of many people who travel oftentimes from Central America and beyond across Mexico often in very dangerous circumstances in order to be able to uh, uh, provide something better for their families and, 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 their, and, their, and their situations. And so, so I think the church has been involved in the issue of human dignity since the very beginning and certainly as it's been, as it's been, a, as it's been expressed in the, in, the, in, the, in the reality of migration uh, I think I think uh, the church has been involved with that. So in the United States, the church has been speaking about that for a very long time, um, and the circumstances have simply simply gotten in a certain way worse uh, over time because of, because we in a certain way our, our our political system has been fairly indifferent to actually addressing the, uh, the human suffering that uh, that is there. It's a very complex issue, and, and I would not say there's a simple solution, but we cannot ignore the need to find a more humane solution. Situations that are affecting women, children, uh, and, and families um, it, it, that are that are facing very extraordinary, tragic situations. So, 
So it does have an impact. But the Holy Father's been, but he talks about, about the issue of, of, of how it is that oftentimes the, the poor and the vulnerable are most manipulated uh, for their labor or most manipulated for their, uh, for, for their to some economic advantage over which they have no control. And I think, I think it's, the, it's the allowing persons to reach the stature of their dignity which allows them to have a certain, certain autonomy over the decisions they make and not being sort of pawns in a, in, a, in a power struggle. And that's unfortunately oftentimes what happens worldwide, worldwide. The Holy Father, if you listen very closely to his address to the United Nations when he was in, uh, when he was in New York, spoke about that very forcefully, about, about the need for world governments uh, to no longer be indifferent to the, to the suffering and the manipulation that the poor uh, have experienced as a result of, um, of an exploitation. And I think that's one of the things he will talk about in many different ways, uh, not just in a, a situation here in the Americas, but certainly a situation worldwide. And he has certainly been very bold about that. So I would, I would expect that to be a continued thing that the, that the Church of the United States will be listening to and, and the Church will continue to speak about. Our call is always for us, for the world, to recognize human dignity first and to fashion our laws according to that. And not and not and not to put another interest above uh, above human dignity when it comes to fashioning our social structures. ¿Cuál va a ser su itinerario de visita? Va a ir a todas las ciudades, va a empezar en México. ¿Cuál cuál es el plan? Sí, de hecho salgo mañana para México. Uh, el, el primer encuentro con el Santo Padre uh, va a ser la misa en la Basílica de Guadalupe el sábado en la tarde. Y luego yo creo que va a pasar el día de domingo. Y, uh, y de hecho, no sé cómo nos van a ver, pero, pero ahí vamos a seguir el, el camino de Santo Padre. Y después de eso, pues, uh, uh, participar en la visita del Papa a San Cristóbal de las Casas, uh, que me alegra mucho, ¿no? Porque jamás he visitado esa, esa zona de México. Y todos me dicen que esa, es, 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 es la zona más bonita de todo el país. Y, uh, pero México tiene zonas y, y áreas y, y estados muy bonitos. Entonces, participo con, mucho, con mucha alegría participar en esa manifestación um, local de fe, de música, de, de comida y de alegría en compartir la fe. ¿no? Y luego después uh, de San Cristóbal de las Casas a pasar a Morelia, a uh, ciudad que sí ya he conocido y, uh, y me encanta y poder participar con el Papa en su visita a Michoacán. Luego después de pasar el día allá uh, con los eventos de Santo Padre, son varios eventos que él va, él va, él va a poder, pues, a va a poder proceder en su, en, su, en su calendario ese día, en su horario, varios eventos. Pero después a Juárez. Y va a ser muy emocionante, ¿no? Porque en Juárez, pues, hay, como le dije a alguien hoy esta mañana, pues, es que el Brownsville a Juárez, pues, es el otro lado de, de la frontera, digo, de, de la, de, del río, de, de Texas, no queda muy lejos, pero es una experiencia. La frontera, la frontera es, una, es una belleza. Eh, la cultura que se, se, se está estableciendo aquí por, por, por generaciones, por, la, por la, los vínculos de amistad, de, de idioma, de cultura entre los Estados Unidos y México, es, algo, es una maravilla. Y, y, y a veces nosotros nomás nos enfocamos en lo mal que hemos visto en la frontera, sea Juárez, o en El Paso, o en Matamoros, o en Brownsville, o lo que sea. En lugar de, en primer lugar, enfocarnos en la belleza de lo que, lo que hemos recibido del Señor por, por esta apertura a la, a la influencia de una cultura sobre, con, con otra cultura, y no necesariamente sobre otra cultura. Y las raíces de la frontera son raíces que van debajo del río, ¿no? y, y, y por eso no, pero son los mismos árboles en, muchos, en muchos, uh, muchas instancias. Pero yo creo que ese momento en Juárez va a ser un momento muy importante para poder, pues, uh, ver y compartir la experiencia de la frontera y, y la experiencia de un pueblo. Juárez ha, ha progresado mucho, están viviendo uh, muchas familias de Juárez que también viven en El Paso, de las mismas familias, así como con nosotros aquí, de entre familias de Matamoros y de Brownsville, de Reynoso y McAllen. Es que es, es la tradición que vivimos, ¿no? Y que en ese caso va a poder pues, compartir, sea en Juárez o sea en El Paso, porque también en El Paso van a, van a tener una, un modo de participar con la misa del Papa. Lo que va a suceder es que vamos a tener una celebración de la, de la fe que tenemos en común y también una, una realidad en común 
de familias, uh, sí, hay, son dos países distintos y eso uh, nadie, nadie va a disputar, pero son, es una cultura que se ha establecido por, por la gracia del Señor y por las, las, los efectos de la historia, ¿no? Y, y va a ser muy bonito poder ver eso y, y compartir. Uh, el Papa viene para dar esperanza compartiendo su fe, que el Cristo crucificado y Cristo sigue siendo el crucificado en este mundo, Cristo en este mundo va a dar uh, la gracia de compartir su resurrección también con su cuerpo y eso es, lo que, es la esperanza que tenemos y eso lo va a mostrar el Papa en, todas, todo, en todos los lugares donde va a visitar, eso sí, uh, pero todo esto pues como digo con ojos abiertos y a ver si la gracia del Señor uh, nos pueda pues enseñar cosas que jamás How were you selected uh, to represent, to be one out of the two bishops representing the U.S.? No, that's a good question. <laughs> um, I'm not absolutely sure. I, 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 I do know that when I was contacted from Archbishop Kurtz, who's the president of the United States Bishops Conference, um, he's from Louisville, Kentucky, and he's the elected president. When I was contacted by his office, that, that the Archbishop was asking me to be one of the two that the uh, that the uh, that the United States would would uh, would send to represent the country uh, and the, the church. Um, I didn't ask. Uh, I suspect because Bishop Oscar Cantu is a good friend of mine. We're actually seven years together uh, in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Uh, is also kind of a border bishop. I, 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 you, know, you, you, you go to El Paso and you just you just kind of like cross the street. You're in Las Cruces, New Mexico, and so and so. There's a I think part of the border experience. Um, there's a huge swath of the United States, especially in the Southwest, that has deep <coughs> cultural and family ties uh, to. Uh, northern Mexico and to the rest of the country. And so I think that may have had something to do with it, but you'd have to ask Archbishop Kurtz what he was thinking. Um, all I could say was, yes, and thank you very much. <laughs> and, uh, so, so, uh, so anyway, but I, 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 I think that has some. Uh, I've traveled a bit in Mexico, and I, 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 I've always enjoyed it, and I think, I think probably the president of the conference does that. And also, this is the second time that you get to meet with the Pope in uh, less than a year. How often does that happen? Not very, I suspect. Uh, but then two extraordinary things happen. You know, one thing is the Pope came to the United States, and that was a really an extraordinary grace for this country, which we're still living, uh, when he went to, uh, first to, uh, to Washington, D.C., and, and there I was able to, uh, to greet him, and then when he went into, uh, into New York and then Philadelphia for the World Day of Families, it's something that, that, uh, that doesn't happen very often. Um, and so that's that was you know a kind of a once in a lifetime situation where the Pope goes to the United States and I happen to be the uh, bishop in, uh, in Texas who was there to say hello. Um, and then that he would come so quickly because actually the trip to Mexico, which had been thought about and planned at one time as part of the same trip to the United States, but the Holy Father himself said that he did he wanted to separate the two trips because because he needed to spend he he couldn't go to Mexico without visit, visiting Our Lady Guadalupe, and so. The logistics of flights and, and just just how all that works, and I can hardly imagine how complicated that might be, was such that, that he said, no, it's better to kind of just, first we do the United States, and, and he stopped in Cuba before he came to the United States, and, and, and by providence he will stop in Cuba again tomorrow before he gets into Mexico. And then, but the trip to Mexico was was already thought about and, and, and was being considered when the trip to the United States was happening, or was being planned, and, and, and it got separated so that it could have a kind of, he wanted to give the right number of days and be able to visit, especially the Basilica, start in Mexico City and go out. Uh, because really, uh, as he said, you know, no es posible visitar México sin saludar a la Virgen de Guadalupe. So that's, it's not possible to go to Mexico for him, who has such deep devotion to the Blessed Virgin, um, which is deep and personal, uh, fabric of his faith, and, and, and to, for him to be able to, to do that and then to visit the other places. And I think, I think that's, um, so the fact that now it happens that I'll be able to go, um, well, it's a work of providence, and I'm well, just grateful for that. Uh, you mentioned that he went to Cuba before he came to the U.S. and now he's going back to Cuba and then to Mexico. Um, do you think that has anything to do with a lot of Cubans trying to cross over to the U.S.? No, I don't really think so. I mean, I'm sure he's aware of that. But it's actually two different circumstances that took him to Cuba. It was a state visit, church visit, pastoral visit to Cuba when he, before he came to the United States. That was something that 
that he was interested in doing and had been for a long time um, to encourage the life of the church in Cuba. And this time, it's, it's a brief stop because it's, it's, it, it has worked out that that's where he will meet. He will meet the patriarch of the Orthodox Church of Russia. And that's a very important uh, meeting. It hasn't happened, uh, I don't think, in history uh, that, they, that, 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 that the Pope of Rome and the, and the patriarch of Moscow have met. And so, and so to discuss, really, um, how, to, how to better unite our efforts in announcing the gospel in, uh, in this current world. And so, and so it, 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 it really it, it had, had it worked out that the patriarch was going to be there, and so I think, I think that's why they kind of worked that in there. So uh, it's very important, but, uh, but it will be fairly brief. Um, but, uh, but, but that is uh, an interesting sort of coincidence that it, was, that, that, that it worked out that way between the two countries. But uh, obviously the Holy Father loves Cuba very much. But you get the sense the Holy Father just loves people, yeah. and that's very important. more peaceful, more just, and more hopeful. What about visiting Chiapas? That's kind of new as well, something interesting. I don't think I <coughs> hope has ever been to Chiapas. No, I don't think so. Uh, it's very close to the south, the southern border, and I think he does want to emphasize that relationship between the see, It's not just the northern border he's visiting, he's visiting the southern border of Mexico, and that's very important in his relationship to Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador. Um, because the plight of the migrant is not just something that, that affects the United States. The plight of the migrant also has, has, re, has reality that starts in Central America and even South America and then moves through Mexico. And there's, a, there's a message there too that, that there needs to be a certain openness and a certain hospitality to, uh, to, the, uh, to the stranger who passes in the midst also of Mexico. How much of this trip to Chiapas is going to be meaning of the indigenous? I understand quite a bit. Um, uh, that's one of the principal reasons he wants to go. Uh, my understanding is that he will make some uh, announcements about the, about uh, the the mass celebrated in indigenous languages, uh, which has always been kind of a always been kind of an important important part of the church's missionary activity. Uh, getting getting uh, the scriptures, the Bible, the liturgy translated into the into a, into, the, into the indigenous languages as uh, as soon as possible. So so yes, I think it will be quite a bit. That's one of the principal reasons he wants. But 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 she, you know, I can get her a plane to fly to Dallas, and she's going to worry, um, uh, or a fly to Houston, or a fly to Washington, and sometimes I have to go places, and so she just said, "Well, you just travel an awful lot." But as long as I can call her on the telephone, and I've already worked that out, so I'll. Uh, then, then, then you know, it's just she said, "Well, that's my son's life." You know, when 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 people ask her, she says, "My son's life. She, he 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 has to go places and." And I guess I worry, but she prays, and that's, that's more important. Anything else? Anything else? I can take Bishop, the, the, the children of the valley, and I know some of my, like my grandsons are very excited that you're going. And I was just wondering, do you have a message for them? Yes, well, for the young people and the children of the valley, you know, we have so many, uh, so many young people, so many children who really, who really, Look to the Holy Father as an example of kind of hopefulness, and, and that uh, and that and that we can work together to to, to, to take care of each other better. And I think, I, and His smile. I, I think, with anything else, when the Holy Father smiles, it's like a great, it's like a great thing. So I would hope my message to the children of the valley is that is that uh, is that I, I have so many faces kind of imprinted on my memory of, of children, families from the valley that I will I will take that with me uh, and, and, and 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 in some way find some way. To share it with the Virgin and share it with with the Holy Father, um, and that they should continue to have hope because Christ crucified is risen from the dead. Amen. <laughs> 